Hey, it's a rainy day in LA. And two Italians sitting on a couch wearing fashionable neckwear. Yeah, fashionable neckwear. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and here with Frank Stallone. It's rainy in LA, man. This is, this is, how was your drive in? Because you come from the other side. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm driving the war wagon today, not the car, the old uh, 93 Bronco. I've had since it was brand new. That's like the AC mobile or something. Yeah, it like is, that. man. That is, yeah. Mine's a black one. It's not the white not one. Not the white one. OG. G OG. Oh. OJ. Yeah, so. We're sitting um, here with Bonamassa Flying Vs, man, that we just finally got in stock, which are <clears throat> pretty fantastic, man. They did a really good job on these guitars. Yeah, they really did. You know, I'm, uh, of course, I'm going to buy one because uh, Mark texted me. He said we just got a few in. These. But no, you, you've you owned real Karina, though. Yes, I have. Did you have uh, a V or did you have an Explorer? I had. You want to get off here? Okay. Here, this is 1965. I worked all summer, and I bought this Gibson Explorer. No one knew what it was, and I paid $150 for it. So that was what seven years after after it, it came so out. So it was just a used guitar. Used guitar. That's what he said. I said I have 150 bucks to go. Frank owned it back. Look at the used this stuff. This ugly, this ugly pointy so thing. So I over pulled there. it out. I said, well. I said, what is it? The guy's name was Shane Thunder. He, Music City in Philadelphia. He goes, I don't know what the hell it is. I said, well, it kind of looks like fire, but he goes, hey, Frank, you want it or you don't? I said, okay, I'll buy it, because you know, I was a strange kid. Case was, per I'm telling you, it was perfect. It was, it, was, it was as good a shape as this. All the gold parts. No so, tarnish, everything was no, shiny no, and perfect, clean. And, yeah. Perfect, yeah. And uh, so I uh, played it for quite a few years, but you know, in those days, there was no pedal board, so it was going clean through a Fender Tremolux. And so... <laughs> I really was into the birds, and like most Americans, we always thought we'd never find a Rickenbacker guitar because they were probably made in Germany, because the Beatles had them. Yeah. Uh, did I know it was made in Fullerton? So, <laughs> Santa Ana and, I, and so Guy had a uh, Maple Glow, not Maple Glow, uh, what, what's the other? Fire Glow. Fire Glow, Rickenbacker 12 string, 360. I said, oh man, I might never see this again. Gosh. So I brought this flying this uh, Explorer into the group. The group was called Great God or Elizabeth, one of those groups in Philadelphia. Great God. And I said, man, I really love that Rickenbacker. And the Rickenbacker had like angle iron on the back where the neck had broke. So I swapped them. <laughs> the headstock repair Rickenbacker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Explorer. Yeah, right. yeah, for Gibson Explorer. So I finally went in about two months later. I said, man, I was thinking, I've had that guitar. I'd kind of like to get it back to go, yeah, man, see what we did to it. These guys, I think, smoked way too much herb. They had cut both the points off it and put a snakeskin pickguard on it. It had one pickup. I said, That's where's the other pickup? Passer. And they and they chipped off the top of the headstock. So the only thing worth a shit was the case, basically. So I let it go, didn't think about it. Then one day I sold Norma, I said, man, look at Explorer. Wait, what's, what's that Explorer worth? He goes, it's worth about 700000 I go, excuse me? How would you like to get a $700,000 return on a $150 investment? investment. No. And, that, and that is one of the, the stupid things, but this is also a stupid thing. Wait a second, you'll love this one too. This is a really bad one. Uh, this is me, wait a second, in my bedroom with 58 Les Paul that I traded a broken Les Paul TV special with no finish on in my Tremolux amp. And that is a sunburst. I've Les seen Paul. that picture. And that's With the case in the back. And that is, what's that worth? Uh, who knows? Somewhere in the hundreds of okay. thousands so, of dollars. So I could have made them. close to a, maybe a million dollars on two guitars. And where is that burst now? I have no idea. I sold it for 400 bucks in 1970. For what? For nothing. I mean, I you, need just, the money. you just needed the money to, uh, yeah, just to pay bills. Yeah, and stuff. $400 though equals like five grand today. Because $1 was equivalent to $11.36. So 400 bucks. You so cash that pretty well. 100 that. bucks is like, you know, 12, yeah. But, you know, again, and it's a thing now, unless I don't really even like the guitar, I might trade stuff, you know, with Norm. If it's something that doesn't mean anything. But that, those would have been nice to have. But uh, but anyway, getting back to this, Joe, Joe Bonamassa is friends of ours. And he is, you know, I. You really know, nailed it, man. I got to be honest, for 899 bucks, it's yeah. a hell of a lot of guitar. And Joe is like Nerdville. He's a very technical guy, so I don't think he would let anything go out with his, with his name, name on it, it that, yeah, if it wasn't really. good. And he plays it, so I mean, and it's uh, all about that for me. The raised, the raised Epiphone logo. Yeah. 
They've done Epiphone Carina V's for years, but they always had just that kind of cheesy silk screen thing. That yeah. that just that it's just that cool. one little touch. And I'm sure he really it. wanted that. Oh yeah, I, mean, I know. And that if they look at the they case, did. it says Amos. Let's see the guitar case with that piece of styrofoam in front of it. And what the story is, he really did the research on this guitar. Well, it was uh, we were going to see. Joe, it was the final night of the Three Kings tour at mm -hmm. the Greek Theater, and that was the night that they were filming the DVD for it. And uh, he had had a Karina set, uh, a V and an Explorer that was on loan to him that he had used the whole tour. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about it months before, you know, dude, you need to get a, you need to get yourself some Karina. And like my phone dings at like 10 o'clock at night, and it's a message from Joe, and he's like, oh, do you think Norm? would sell me the Karina V from the book because he wanted, he, you know, there's a lot of forgeries and fake yeah. ones of these and stuff and he knew Norm's was right. So we went to the show, we saw him do the DVD thing. The next day we went into storage and we pulled out the V and, and that's, uh, that's, that's the guitar, the... that's the guitar that this is based off. Oh, was that the with, Amos? Th that's Amos with the black pit guard and the white poker chip. Um, as far as we've found... But Norm found, didn't know the history of the Norm guitar. didn't know any of the history. As far as we know, the, the stuff me and Joe have gone back and forth on, there was two that we know of for sure that shipped with the black guard and the white chip. Norm always thought that the chip was had cracked and somebody yeah. just put yeah, a white yeah, one yeah, on yeah. there. It's actually factory. Pete Townsend's is this exact same specs, and then okay. there's this one. And it got traced back to a place called Arthur's Music, which was run by a guy named Amos Arthur in Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Indiana. Okay. And we found pictures of it in black and white on the showroom floor oh, with him playing it and sure enough there it is white poker chip black guard so that's why the name got called amos and this this was a truss rod cover here is actually a reproduction when they brought the guitar back to the shop the 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 daughter and the and the granddaughter who uh -huh. still run the store gave joe amos arthur's old you know you could buy these you know, blank. Oh, really? Yeah, I've got a Birdland in the back that has one of these un unetched on it. And the store, if I've talked to Joe, is still in business, isn't it? It is. It's one of the oldest independently operated music stores in the world. Well, That's know, kind of the story of, of that one. I've had a Gibson Flying V, and I've had the other Epiphone. This is a lot better. And, and i got to give a hands up to Joe. I usually will not play a foreign guitar. And this is not made in Japan. It's made in Indonesia. But they... Yeah, they did they a good job. It. And we were talking about the Firebirds, too. Anybody who missed out on the Joe Bonamassa Firebird one. 1s I love it. really missed out because those are really, it's really good. killer I'm gonna, guitars. I'm going to play it my next gig. I'm telling you, I said, I'm, I'm not a Firebird fan, but I played that, and Joe said, yeah, the, you told me. The necks are actually a little thinner than the original Firebird. And I got to tell you, man, that thing really is easy to play. It's, it's, it's fast. And, you know, so what? I mean, if, if Joe put his name on it, I, I'll go with that. Because yeah, I don't I, think he, I, he, he yeah. wouldn't do it, you know? I trust his opinion. Why don't we play some, some Flying V kind of stuff? Okay. Do, uh... Cut it off first while Mark starts playing because then it'll blow me out now. <laughs> and I won't get laid from this video. So. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's always better that See, way. I, I got to get chicks. Mark has a beautiful wife, so I got to make it You're work. Still doing the rounds. What do you got coming up? You got gigs coming up in town? Yeah, uh, March uh, 21st at um, Vibrato. I gotta come out to you one gotta, of them. Mark, I told you. I, gotta, I just gotta know. I gotta get the babysitters come? booked. But I, I'm like the only one who hasn't been out, and it's, yes. apparently it's quite a show that you put on, and everybody it's, always comes back with raving reviews. It's a about fun the show. show. Now, really funny. I just, you know, we, uh, they've been doing the documentary on me called Frank Stallone. That is no Stallone. Frank. That is. And it just blew up in this monster. We were just at Richie Sambora's house filming. I saw you posting pictures of last doing week, and God, see, so have some guitars. Have you been to his house? 
Uh, it's like the neatest knot in a yeah. while, but I, I, and I know they kind of. It's so clean. The guitars change out. But. I said most musicians are slobs. This house, you could do surgery in. I mean, also three housekeepers doesn't help. Yeah, that helps. And Ori, his girlfriend, was there. She's fantastic, and and and, and he played me some of their new stuff. It's new great. Records, great. So he's in the video. Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses is Paul and Oates. Now how do you know Duff? Just know him around, you know. Just from he's around, just, just from around LA. Yeah, he's years. just a really cool guy. And I said, "Listen, I'm doing this documentary." And he said, "Yeah, man, I'll do it." So I got Danny Aiello, I got Geraldo, I got my brother, I've got uh, Frankie Avalon, I've got Arnold. So I got like 35 people, and so it was really nice of Richie and these guys. And Joe said he's going to do it too. Oh, very cool. He better after I bought two of his guitars. If not, Joe, I <laughs> want a rebate. Yeah, You're Bonamassa. Watching. Bonamassa. We're watching you, and. Uh, <laughs> So that's what's going on, and uh, you know, just playing, getting some more gigs. I really enjoy your stuff. I actually enjoy your <laughs> things you post. The greatest one was the base, how do you save a drowning bass player through his anthem or something like that. I, I, Mark Igne at, at Mark Ignisi on Instagram, by the way. That's no, right. that video that's of Frank, though, is my favorite. No, I did post some, some yeah. vintage Stallone this week. Which one was that? The, the <laughs> returning your bedroom back into oh, the computer room. Yeah, Ted and <laughs> Eric's adventure, whatever show that is. But it's one of these shows, I went in out of nowhere, and they said, hey, man, the, you want to do a show? I said, a kitty show? So I walked in. And he goes, yeah, you're going to sing to this little girl about the computer room. At that point, I didn't even know what a computer was. So I went in and I did it, and I forgot about it. I'm telling you, Mark, that thing is like viral. People go, hey, man, I saw you in... I said, so I do bar fly. You don't talk about Tombstone. You talk about me <laughs> singing to a, a green screen of a computer, right? So, I mean, so, so th yeah, a lot of things go viral. I th what, went, what did you get more hits on, that or me and my speed? Up? I think I got more hits on on Little Bear humping you on the oh, floor. Well, that yeah. one probably. Blew well, up Little Bear trying to sodomize me on the floor here was kind of scary. <laughs> I mean, it's not every day you get a uh, German Shepherd to try to like cornhole you on the floor here, but that's uh, only at Norm's. Case. Uh, at Norm's. Guys, hey, Frank, it's always a pleasure to see you. Good we work. got people who want to try and buy stuff too, so we're gonna wrap it up. But, yeah, and uh, I will say anyway, by. this is really. I'm I'm going to buy this in a, a minute, and it's a really. Great guitar, and I'm sure there'll be pictures of it on. It. What is your Instagram at? Uh, Frank dot Stallone. At Frank dot Stallone. Oh, there's some great stuff on there. You should follow that. You should get on there and follow. I that. might use this as a sex toy tonight. Oh, oh it's my like, god! It's a V. Okay. It's a All right, shit. enough. It's a wedge. <laughs> enough, right. enough. Hey. It's a V hole. What can I tell you? So, okay. yeah, it's been fun. All right, Good to see you, Uncle Frank. The Italians right, on the couch. Bye, guys. The Italians on the couch. <laughs> Peace.